Okay. You ready? Ready. All right. So welcome. I'm, my name is Chris Wheeler. Um, this is my senior sound presentation. Um, I'm going to start with my research because um, it's something that's really fascinating to me and it's something that I wanted to learn more about. So you'll see where I'm going with this. Um, but basically, so everyone here, just by gauging the room and the few you here, everyone <laughs> probably, everyone drove a car today to school, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone? Good. So there are um, two main types of gasoline powered combustion engines. You have the two stroke or the four stroke engine. Um, and their names they pretty much explain how they operate. Um, a two stroke completes a combustion and exhaust stroke in two rotations of the piston, and a four stroke will take four rotations of the piston. So I'm going to start with the um, four stroke engine just because it's, it's, it's something that everyone has in their car. And so it's something that I'll hopefully, when at the end of this presentation, you'll kind of understand what's happening underneath the hood of your car when you're driving. So this is the four-stroke engine. So as the piston, which is right here, as that is moving down, the um, intake valve opens and, and to, uh, it releases a mixture of fuel and air into the chamber. And then uh, that's the intake stroke. And as the piston moves up, it compresses that mixture. And that's the compression stroke. Um, and then as the spark plug, which is right here, um, it releases a spark. And that resulting explosion drives the piston back down. And that is the combustion stroke. Um, and then finally, as the piston moves back up, the exhaust valve opens and it pushes the exhaust out through the tailpipe. So it's not really difficult to see where the names come from. They're pretty um, self-explanatory. Uh, but now I want to talk about the two-stroke engine um, because it's something that you'll see in smaller engines. And it's actually, it sounds like it's more basic, but it was patented after the four-stroke engine. Uh, Carl Benz received the patent for his two-stroke engine design in 1879 in Germany. Um, he saw three out of the four strokes, and a four-stroke engine is wasted, and he wanted to fix that. A uh, two-stroke has much simpler mechanics. Uh, mechanics it consolidates the process of the four strokes into two strokes. Uh, but how does it do that, right? So the piston is really doing a bunch of different things in a two-stroke engine, so it's a little hard to split up. Um, so as I talk, the picture, I labeled everything that I'm going to be talking about, so hopefully it will make sense to you guys. Um, so a two-stroke engine is drawing air and fuel into the crankcase while it's pressurizing air and fuel in the chamber, and it's forcing up air and fuel to the chamber when it's being driven down by combustion. So one side of the piston is the combustion chamber up here. Um, and that is where the piston is compressing um, the fuel and air mixture and uh, absorbing the energy released by the ignition of the fuel. And on the other side of the piston, down here, is the crankcase, um, which uh, that acts as an air chamber or a reservoir. So as the piston moves up on the combustion stroke, it creates a vacuum um, to suck air and fuel in through the reed valve, which is right here. And that valve does not have to be mechanically actuated because of the, the uh, vacuum and the airflow. Uh, meanwhile, it's the size of the piston in a two-stroke engine that do the job of the valves um, in a four-stroke. So it's covering and uncovering the intake chamber to the exhaust port out of it. So as the piston moves down, it's covering one of these at a time to prevent um, gas or exhaust from coming out depending on which stroke it's at. Um, and so the two-stroke engines, they are lighter, simpler, most expensive to manufacture and have really good power to weight ratios compared to four stroke engine designs. And also, they run a lot cooler. Uh, three out of the four strokes in a four stroke engine involve really hot stuff. Compression heats up, combustion is super hot, and the exhaust is just pushing out hot air. Um, each new charge in a two stroke engine is actually cooling off the chamber. Um, and oftentimes, the top of the cylinder is exposed to. Um, the air, that's why you'll see on like dirt bikes or snowmobiles, they'll have metal ridges. That's to dissipate the heat into the air. Um, in a four-stroke engine, valves allow the separation between the combustion chamber and the drive shaft. So this is kind of this is why you'll see a four-stroke engine in a car, um, although it's not as like um, advanced in, in its like mechanics. It's a little simpler, but it lets oil lubricate the systems. So 
in the two-stroke engine, you have gas and oil that have to mix before getting to the chamber, and the gas and oil will do lubrication. And so gas and oil lubricates worse than oil alone, and then gas and oil also combusts worse than gasoline alone. And so two-stroke oil is expensive. It takes about four ounces of it, four ounces of oil for a gallon of gas, and if you were to use that in a car, it would be about a gallon of oil every thousand miles. So as you can see, it's really not fuel efficient, and it causes a lot of pollution. You know, you're probably not taking in a perfect fuel and air mixture, and each time a new charge is loaded into the chamber, some of that sneaks out the exhaust port, and that's why your leaf blowers or lawn mowers will still smell like gas. So now, the boring stuff is over. I want to get into my project real quick. So for my project, I redid a 1974 snowmobile. This was something that I had in my yard, and I was always interested in snowmobiles, so I was like, this is a perfect idea for my project, right? Because I can learn something new, something that interests me. So this is just a slideshow of pictures of my project, and as the slideshow is going, I'm just going to talk you guys through it, like what I did and stuff. So this snowmobile was it's been sitting out in the yard since 18, I don't know, geez, 19, <laughs> um, 84, I believe, was the last year on the sticker. Um, and so when I went to take it in, I, I first thing I did was I took the seat off, um, and uh, I was I was generally surprised when I took the seat off. There must have been like 200 black ants or something. They were all crawling everywhere. Um, so that was a little. I was a little gross, uh, I was, so I wasn't really sure what else I would find. Um, but you know, as I was looking in the engine, there's like nests and stuff, acorns, so many acorns. Um, so I spent a lot of time after I took the engine out cleaning. Um, cleaning was a huge part of this, and I just want to make sure you guys know when I started this, it's not like I really had a knowledge of what I was doing. I mean, like I had a background, but what I. I mean, I was born in 2001, so I know nothing about a 1974 machine. So I spent a lot of time um, pr printing out manuals, um, and I put a big binder together, um, and I labeled it. So when I was working, I'd say I was working on uh, take, how to take off the carburetors. I'd find that in the manual, and then I'd see what I needed to do. Um, and if I couldn't find it there, I would um, go online and research and see what I could find. So luckily, I was able to get all that. Um, as you can see right now, I just had everything taped off and painted it, so it's starting to come together. Um, uh, another problem I had too was cleaning the gas tank, because the gas tank has to be very clean. Um, and I don't know how it happened, but there was a bunch of like dirt stuck to the bottom of the tank, so it was very difficult. I mean, the hole in the gas tank is, you know, how big a hole is, and the gas tank's like this. So I'm sitting there like a stick with a rag and duct tape trying to clean all the crevices and it was, it was difficult but I was able to do that um, and then so when the engine is back in this is obviously this is what it looks like now um, it does run I, I did, unfortunately the video would not upload to the slides but I do have it on my phone if anyone's curious to see um, it's just a little video um, so this is like the final product as you can see the pictures rolling through here um, basically everything had to be refurbished and I really I learned a lot through this whole process. Um, it was a lot of time. I can't emphasize that enough. Like just the cleaning, like the shining. Like I guess you can't really see over here. It's all aluminum, so it has to be polished. So I'm like waxing it for so long, trying to get it nice and clean. Um, and then the parts availability for this is very difficult. Um, it's such an old snowmobile, and they're becoming more popular. So people who have parts are holding on to the good stuff and they're trying to sell the not so good stuff. Um, so that kind of ties into my community connection because I spent some time at Bear Brook State Park um, where there's a snowmobile um, museum in here in New Hampshire. Um, so I was able to network with people there and make connections and kind of like see where I can find parts. Um, and a lot of people, I was actually been in touch with a guy in Canada um, who made the seat and stuff for it. I had to like send it out to him and then he refurbished it and stuff, so it really all came along nice. So that was that was my project, um, and then the message for this, I just wanted to leave. This this is a quote here: uh, Learn something new, try something different, 
convince yourself you have no limits. So the message of this is kind of like, you know, go out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, this was something that I didn't think I'd be able to do. Um, when Ms. Aubin was explaining like what a great idea for the senior project would be, I was instantly thinking this. Um, I was it something that I was interested about, but I had no idea what I'd do, and I didn't think I'd ever find the time to figure out how to do it. Um, and so I used Senior STEM as an opportunity for me to um, start doing my research and get it all done, because I have to block out time, so it actually worked out perfect. It's amazing how much you guys can get done if you just stay off the phones a little bit. You know, it's, it's actually like you spent a lot of time, and it really, really came together nice. So that's the quote I want to leave you guys with. Just, you know, try something new.